So would he be your first signing? Listen, I think he said that he'd only come back down to the championship if he's playing for Leeds United. Good morning, Leeds United fans. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor. We're back here with another one Leeds video. Before we start the video, you know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Share to your friends on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want. We do have the debrief tonight from 7pm. Are you going to be there? I hope to see you there. It's the first live that we've done during this international break. And listen, I'm buzzing to be back. Buzzing pre-Watford. Let me know your thoughts in the section below. How are you feeling about that game? Is it a bit nervy now? You know, for me, I'm feeling a bit nervy. Can't lie. I really can't. And that's not because I'm, I'm expecting Leeds United to lose. It's probably because we were doing the, the final prediction video yesterday, which I, I genuinely, guys, I would I would say to you, go watch it. It's a really, really good video. I've got another one coming out in probably the next couple of days as well. Similar vibe to that. And I think you guys really enjoyed it, looking at the engagement and the DMs I got. So yeah, make sure you watch it. It's well worth it. We've also got Across the Pond on the Patreon, say link in the description below. Merchandise as well, haven't got mine on today because it's in the wash, but I've got uh, a few new bits coming as well, so make sure you get yours as well. So, okay, what are we discussing today? We are discussing a little bit of Connor Roberts, uh, a little bit of Connor Roberts for uh, for a while, actually. It looks like, according to a few sources this morning, Championship or Premier League, Leeds United are going to be looking at making Connor Roberts their permanent signing. Now, fascinating stuff, really, because it throws into the mix... Archie Gray's position. Is that going to be centrally? Is that going to be on the bench? I highly doubt that. But it really does throw it up in the air, doesn't it? Because Con Roberts, if he is to come in as on a permanent sign, he's already mentioned several times how much he loves Leeds, loves the fan base, loves just being here to help Leeds United. And I think a lot of those are glowing references almost that he would really welcome the signing. I think, listen, moving to Leeds United, I think to any player is a hallmark of their career or one of the hallmarks of, of their, their careers. It is a wonderful club with wonderful history, grandeur and a fantastic fan base. And I think anybody who put on that white shirt, pink shirt, blue shirt, is, is listen, in a very, very good space when it comes to their career. And I think Con Roberts realises that. He's spoken glowingly about his social media posts that I've got so many more engagements and interactions since he's been at Leeds United. And listen, it looks like he's settled in really well and he's barely played any minutes, if we're being honest about the entire span of him at Leeds. He's barely played any minutes. So to, to almost still see that, According to a few reports, he does want to sign for Leeds regardless. That's great news. He's running out of his contract, as we know, at Burnley. That's going to be up, as is Conor Roberts, is, uh, is, as is uh, sorry uh, Joe Rodon, in terms of the length that they've got left on the contracts. They're going to be expiring at the same time. And I think it would be a really, really good move for Leeds United. But what happens to Archie Gray then? Does he go centrally? Does he stay at right back? It's an interesting conundrum, but one that I am very, very much welcome to. So Con Roberts, let's hope that whatever the outcome, he's a Leeds United player next season. Because listen, that is captain material for the future as well. What a replacement that would be for Luke Kalin. Well, guys, it looks like Junior Firpo is going to be struggling to get back for the Watford game. It looks like Junior, as well, we know Junior's made that left back position, his own really at Leeds United. He's been doing really, really well at this level. I think there's still judgments to be made on him at Premier League level and judgments on his position or awareness. But overall, when you look at his position at Leeds United, when it's comes to that left back spot, he's barely been injured. He's looked consistent and he's built up this momentum, which has been really good at left back. And what I will say is I think he's aided a lot of Crescentia Somerville in terms of just offering that overlap option. I think Junior Firpo is more of a left wing back. He was at Betis where he was the most successful in his career. And I feel when he's been in that position for Leeds United, almost acting as a left winger, Leeds in possession have been much better. And I think you've got to give credit to Junior Firpo. I don't think Sam Byram is as uh, sort of expansive on that left-hand side as Junior Firpo. We'll, we've gone over why that is multiple times, but I think Junior Firpo is is excellent going forward, really. I think his final delivery can sometimes be a little bit poor, but then you look at the Sheffield Wednesday game where that delivery was nothing short of, of world-class, really, to find Patrick Bamford at the back post with that whip. And... He looks like he's going to be out for this one or potentially out for this one. The Dominican Republic have played over this international break and it looks like Junior is going to be struggling to get back within almost the, the allocated time for rest and recovery. So what then happens? What do Leeds United do? Are we looking at a Sam Byram left back? 
position. I mean, you would you would expect so. Is Sam going to be fit for this one? You would hope so, but we know with Sam it can be thrown up in the air every single day. He's fit one day and then the other day he's probably not fit. Or he's fit one week, then not the other week. So it's always going to be a tough one for Sam Byron, but hopefully he's ready. But it does look like that is going to be a significant change from Daniel Farker's outfit on Friday night. And you don't want changes. We never want changes. But because of the calibre of our side, we have players who've been away on international break. We have players who are likely going to be more tired than the Watford players because they've been away for international duty. And we've got more players on international duty than Watford have players on international duty. So that is a little bit irritating when it comes to Leeds and having to hit this ground running because, listen, we all know it is going to be a huge eight games and I keep mentioning that checkered flag, but it does go down on Friday night at 8pm and Leeds United are going to be the first ones off uh, the grid line. So let's hope that Byron comes in. Let's hope that Byron is going to be playing consistently. If Furpo is back and is available, then great. But it is, um, according to, to a lot of reports, significantly unlikely that he's going to be starting for Leeds United on what, uh, against Watford on Friday night. What would you do? Robert go left back? Would Byron come in at left back? Is it that simple? What would you guys do? And yes, everybody, it looks like once again, the eyes, in my opinion, are going to be on one team one team this weekend. I think maybe it doesn't alleviate the pressure from Leeds United because we have to perform and we have to win. No questions about it. But there is a huge pressure on Leicester City this weekend, in my opinion. Massive. Obviously, uh, with their form at this moment in time, the loss against Chelsea. Um, listen, it's still a loss. It's still an L on your record. You've got to recover from that. There has been a lot of discontentment among the Leicester fan base with Enzo Maresca, and that is so interesting. It's been building up and building up and building up. Simon Grayson's even commented on it. And yeah, Simon, <clears throat> Simon Grayson was speaking to a publication and he's even a little bit worried about Leicester's charge towards the back end of the season with their manager being questioned so heavily by the fan base to give up a 17-point lead like they have done to really flop in their last six games, lose three in those last six games as well. Listen, the pressure is all on Leicester this weekend as well, and especially if Leeds put that pressure on them on Friday night and get another win. Listen, it's going to be a big one for the Foxes this weekend, so we'll wait and see how they do. And everybody, so interesting, this one. It's a bit of a Willy Nyonso sign that maybe he could start in this position against Watford. Now, I've mentioned Jorginho Rutter. Obviously, him being out for this game, potentially dependent on his hernia, but you're expecting him to be out. Willy Nyonso played for the under-21s, the Italian under-21s, at centre forward the other day against Latvia. And it's really, really interesting because not only does he primarily play as a centre forward, he also plays as a shadow striker, almost in that number 10 role for the Italian under-21s. Fascinating, especially to say he's played there again and they see him almost in that role. And you wonder if he's going to play for the Italian first team, if that is going to be his role as well, because normally you mould from the under-21s to the first team. There's a synergy between the coaches fascinating stuff there and this is what I mean they see him as very very good centrally played very very well the other night according to several reports um, another little bonus as well is he was captain uh, for the game the other night which is cracking to see as well a little bit of leadership he's clearly growing as an individual but yeah William Yonto playing centrally for the Italian side could be uh, very sort of poignant in my opinion and, and hopefully a pointer as well towards Daniel Farker start him in there we're probably going to see Joel Perot in there don't really want to see that again but listen I would welcome seeing a dynamic balanced Willian Yonto in that 10 let me know what you think and finally everybody to end off it looks like the Legion United have been linked again to Charlie Taylor I mentioned in the summer that Leeds had approached Charlie Taylor I can tell you that for a fact and allegedly, um, listen, it wasn't to work out between company Burnley and Charlie, but it looks like he's coming to the end of his contract this summer. The 30-year-old isn't going to be in talks with Burnley, apparently, even though he's been playing every single game. So would he be your first signing? Listen, I think he said that he'd only come back down to the Championship if he's playing for Leeds United, who we'll go up to the Premier League. I think he'd definitely welcome that as well. Let us know what you think. And that's going to be it from me, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the new merch. Head on over to the Patreon for some bonus podcasts. And I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.